From millennium skipping Victorians to phone booth hopping teenagers, the term time travel often summons our most fantastic visions of what it means to move through the fourth dimension. As you've probably noticed, we're all constantly engaged in the act of time travel. At its most basic level, time travel is the rate of a change in the universe. And like it or not, we are constantly undergoing change. Human beings frolic about in the three spatial dimensions of length, width, and depth. Time joins the party at that most crucial fourth dimension. Time can't exist without space, and space can't exist without time. The two exist as one, the space-time continuum. Any event that occurs in the universe has to involve both space and time. Speed plays a role in the rate at which we experience time. Time passes more slowly the closer you approach the unbreakable cosmic speed limit we call the speed of light. For instance, the hands of a clock in a speeding train move more slowly than those of a stationary clock. A human passenger wouldn't feel the difference, but at the end of the trip, the speeding clock would be slowed by billionths of a second. If such a train could attain 99.999% of light speed, only one year would pass on board for every 223 years back at the train station. Now time passes faster in orbit because satellites are farther away from the mass of the Earth. Down here on the surface, the planet's mass drags on time and slows it down in small measures. We call this effect gravitational time dilation. So if you were to put a clock on a rocket ship and one down on Earth, time would move faster on that rocket ship than on Earth. According to Einstein's theory of general relativity, gravity is a curve in space-time, and astronomers regularly observe this phenomenon when they study light moving near a sufficiently massive object. Particularly large suns can cause an otherwise straight beam of light to curve in what we call the gravitational lensing effect. What does this have to do with time? Remember, any event that occurs in the universe has to involve both space and time. The gravity doesn't just pull on space, it also pulls on time. We wouldn't be able to notice minute changes in the flow of time, but a sufficiently massive object would make a huge difference. Say, like the supermassive black hole Sagittarius A at the center of our galaxy. Here, the mass of 4 million suns exists as a single, infinitely dense point, known as a singularity. Circle this black hole for a while, without falling in of course, and you'd experience time at half the Earth rate. In other words, you'd round out a 5 year journey to discover an entire decade has passed on Earth. So this brings us to black holes. Circle a black hole long enough and gravitational time dilation will take you into the future as mentioned. But what would happen if you flew right into the maw of this cosmic titan? Most scientists agree the black hole would probably crush you, but one unique variety of black hole might not. The Kerr black hole. In 1963, mathematician Roy Kerr proposed the first realistic theory for a rotating black hole. Kerr postulated that if dying stars collapsed into a rotating ring of neutron stars, their centrifugal force would prevent them from turning into a singularity. Since the black hole wouldn't have a singularity, Kerr believed it would be safe to enter without fear of the infinite gravitational force at its center. If Kerr black holes existed, Scientists speculate that we might pass through them and exit through a white hole. Think of this as the exhaust end of a black hole. Instead of pulling everything into its gravitational force, the white hole would push everything out and away from it, perhaps into another time or even another universe. Now this brings us to multiverses or parallel universes, but that's for another video. Theoretical Kerr black holes aren't the only possible cosmic shortcut to the past. There's also the equally theoretical Einstein-Rosen bridge to consider, known better as a wormhole. Einstein's general theory of relativity allows for the existence of wormholes, since it states that any mass curves space-time. Although the Einstein wormholes don't stay open for long, they form and pinch out quickly in a matter of nanoseconds. 
Now what we need is something to make them stay open. In this simplified example, space is depicted as a two-dimensional plane rather than a four-dimensional one. Imagine that this sheet is folded over, leaving a space between the top and bottom. Placing a baseball on the top side will cause a curvature to form. If an equal mass were placed on the bottom part of the sheet, at a point that corresponds with the location of the baseball on top, the second mass would eventually meet with the baseball. Of course, it's also possible that some unforeseen physical or quantum property prevents such a wormhole from occurring, and even if they do exist, they may be incredibly unstable. According to astrophysicist Stephen Hawking, wormholes may exist in quantum foam, the smallest environment in the universe. Here, tiny tunnels constantly blink in and out of existence, momentarily linking separate places in time. We've established that time travel into the future happens all the time. You'll make it to the future. It's just a question of how fast the trip will be. But what about time travel into the past? The Milky Way galaxy is roughly 100,000 light years wide, so light from its more distant stars can make thousands upon thousands of years to reach. Glimpse that light, and you're essentially looking back in time. There's nothing in Einstein's theory that precludes time travel into the past, but the very premise of pushing a button and going back to yesterday violates the law of causality, or cause and effect. One event happens in our universe, and it leads to yet another in an endless one-way string of events. In every instance, the cause occurs before the effect. Just try to imagine a different reality, say, in which a murder victim dies of his or her gunshot wound before being shot. It violates reality as we know it. For starters, if you traveled back in time 200 years, you'd emerge in a time before you were born. Think about that for a second. In the flow of time, the effect, you, would exist before the cause, your birth. To better understand what we're dealing with here, consider the famous grandfather paradox. You're a time-traveling assassin, and your target just happens to be your own grandfather. So you pop through the nearest wormhole and walk up to your spry 18-year-old version of your grandfather. You raise your gun, but just what happens when you pull the trigger? Think about it, you haven't been born yet. Neither has your father. If you kill your own grandfather in the past, he'll never have a son. That son will never have you, and you'll never happen to take that job as a time-traveling assassin. You wouldn't exist to pull the trigger, thus negating the entire string of events. We call this an inconsistent causal loop. On the other hand, we have to consider the idea of a consistent causal loop. While equally thought-provoking, this theoretical model of time travel is paradox-free. According to physicist Paul Davis, such a loop might play out like this. A math professor travels into the future and steals a groundbreaking math theorem. The professor then gives the theorem to a promising student. Then that promising student grows up to be the very person from whom the professor stole the theorem to begin with. Then there's the post-selected model of time travel, which involves distorted probability close to any paradoxical situation. What does this mean? Well, put yourself in the shoes of the time-traveling assassin again. This time-travel model would make your grandfather virtually death-proof. You can pull the trigger, but the laser will malfunction. Perhaps a bird will poop at just the right moment, but some quantum fluctuation will occur to prevent a paradoxical situation from taking place. But then there's another possibility. The future or past you travel into might just be a parallel universe. So if the past you travel into exists in a separate timeline, Killing your grandfather in cold blood is no big whoop. Of course, this might mean that every time Jaunt would land you in a new parallel universe, and you might never return to your original universe. Confused yet? Well, that's time travel for you. And as always, stay curious.